that are making our city shine internationally. You are the people of compassion. Let's listen to the Charter for Compassion. The principle of compassion lies at the heart of all religious, ethical, and spiritual traditions. Calling us always to treat all others as we wish to be treated ourselves. Compassion impels us to work tirelessly to alleviate the suffering of our fellow creatures. To withdraw themselves from the center of our world and put another there. To honor the inviolable sanctity of every single human being. Treating everybody without exception. With absolute justice, equity, and respect. It is also necessary in both public and private life to refrain consistently and empathically from inflicting pain. To act or speak violently out of spite, chauvinism, or self-interest. To impoverish, exploit, or deny basic rights to anybody. And to incite hatred by denigrating others, even our enemies. Is a denial of our common humanity. We acknowledge that we have failed to live compassionately. And that some have even increased the sum of human misery in the name of religion. We therefore call upon all men and women to restore compassion to the center of morality and religion. To return to the ancient principle that any interpretation of scripture that breeds violence, hatred, or disdain is illegitimate. <laughs> Of our other traditions, religions, and cultures to encourage a positive appreciation of cultural and religious diversity, to cultivate an informed empathy with the suffering of all human beings Even those. regarded as enemies. We urgently need to make compassion a clear, luminous, and dynamic force in our polarized world, rooted in a principle of determination to transcend selfishness. Compassion can break down political, dogmatic, ideological, and religious boundaries. Born of our deep interdependence, compassion is essential for human relationships and to a fulfilled humanity. It is the path to enlightenment and indispensable in the creation of a just economy and a peaceful global community. Holy run beyond all names, guide us that we may grow in wisdom, grow in knowledge, grow in compassion, amen. Here inviting to all of us. We have Dr. Jessica Parra on motions in this room. Probably the other ones don't. She's the director of student services. Uh, my name, I've already introduced myself, Dr. Tina Siller, associate director. We have Valerie Vargas, our senior academic advisor. She's going to be the DBA uh, advisor. So, any DBA students in here, you want to raise your hand real quick? Awesome. Welcome. So, she's your academic advisor. She's actually manning our virtual uh, chat. So, she's with us virtually. Then we have Christina Rollison, our advisor, too. She's some of your advisors. How many, Christina? I don't know. One. One. One's here. All but <laughs> well, welcome. So Christina's our advisor. Then we have Tiara Daniels, Kathy Anderson. And you saw Kathy and, and Cynthia Garcia at the sign-in desk. And probably Tiara and Lauren outside kind of directing students where to go. Some of y'all met Mark Cardenas and Nicholas Flores. And this is our, our your advising team. I get to talk now. Mm -hmm. All right, so my name is Christina, and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the student's role. Um, out of curiosity, who is coming here as an undergraduate? Who's coming here as a graduate student? And we had a few DBA students. But while you're all at different levels, you all still have the same role as a student. So one, we have your university bulletin or student handbook. You can also call it the catalog that can be found on the registrar's page. This is important. Those are those little red tape, those little bits and bobs of how exactly you get your degree. So it's good that you take time and read up on those. If you're not sure where to find them, definitely reach out to your advisor and we will be happy to help you out for that. And that goes right into seek out the explanations for any policies or procedures that you see that you have questions on. We are here to help you. We are your advocate. We want you to have the ownership and understand the path that you're going to be on with us. You're going to know and meet your graduation and other requirements that are contained in there. It's also going to be on your degree plan and some of those uh, 
some of you should have a copy of your degree plan with you. Um, schedules, we're here to help you with your schedules. University of Publications, we do a newsletter. We also have some other advising portals that you can participate in to keep you up to date with what's going on. And then always maintain your own academic record. You wanna make sure that that ownership that I talked about, that you have that when you're looking at the classes and what you need to accomplish while you're with us. Now, how do we work together as a team? So definitely get our phone number, definitely have our email. We are here, like I said, to be your advocate. We're your support. Use us to help you accomplish your goals. We want to see you do that. Most of your team that you're going to work with, I would say 100% of our team actually, has been a working adult while attending college. I myself was working and went through our online graduate program. So we have the experience. We have that empathy from coming from a working, a family, a trying to add in school into it. And we're here to help you. We're here to listen let us know and we'll find those resources that you might need. We're going to help you in getting ready for those courses. We're going to help you guide, uh, help you guide through the degree plan to make sure that you are taking the right courses. This will kind of lead into if you haven't gotten in all your official transcripts from any transfer work that you have, please make sure you get those in as soon as possible. The quicker we have that, the better we can help you because we're going to be able to avoid any credit that you could have already taken that's going to apply to your degree plan. And we can also look at substitutions. There might be classes that you've taken at another university that are gonna apply here. We just gotta do a little bit of work. So definitely get those transcripts in. And then finally, it's just about maintaining that checklist of your progress towards graduation. So like I'm kind of pounding in there, this is your degree. I want you to have that ownership of it. The advising process depends on your participation with us. We wanna help you, but we can only drag you so far, you know, so please reach out to us. Let us know what questions you have. The final responsibility is going to be with you on meeting all those academic requirements. So what tools do we have for you as students? So our main student portal is called Cardinal Apps. Here is where you're going to go in and find your student email. You have Office 365, so you're going to find your Outlook in there. Degree Works, which is your degree plan. Canvas, which is essentially your online classroom, and whether you're taking courses online or in person, they're going to be using some aspect of that. Online, 100% using it. In person, a little bit different. We have your banner registration, so your portal for registration is going to be in Cardinal Apps. We have UIW Engage. For those of us that are uh, joining us as an undergraduate, you have a part of your degree plan that is the community service requirement, and that is going to be done through UIW Engage. And then cash net is pretty much what it is. That's the money spot. That's where the cash goes. So if, but do definitely take down that number for IT. If you have any problems logging into your portals, definitely reach out to them. Yes, ma'am. Um, if you have issues, like I can get into 80% of them, but mm -hmm. the rest of us say like you don't exist. Okay. So mm -hmm. have you registered for classes yet? Yeah. Okay. So definitely check with your advisor or call IT because that might be a hiccup is from when you've registered to when it's updated in all the portals to make sure, because like Canvas, since it's your online virtual classroom, you won't have access to that until you have classes on the books. Okay, no problem. All right, so student email. Each of you have a student email account. What I want to press here is that please do not forward that email to another personal email. Our IT has certain things that if we send it something to your student email and it's getting forwarded, it's going to come back to us and it's not going to get to you. So try to make sure that you keep that student email separate and not forwarded. Um, and then always make sure to include your student ID number in your emails because that just makes it easier for the person that's getting the email to help you out. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. You're uh, good. Are you talking about auto forwarding or can we forward like if we're like, ooh, I really need to keep this separate? Auto forwarding. Oh. So, like a lot of people, well, I have my personal or my work account. I just want it all to come to one. If you auto forward it, our firewalls are going to be like, no, and they're going to come back to us. Yeah. Yep, my own. All right. Now, the big thing is degree works. This is your degree plan. This is your path to graduation. All of you are going to be utilizing the same application, regardless of what degree you're on. For those of you that got uh, a folder when you came in, there should be a copy. We tried to get everybody who had said yes that they were coming, a copy of their degree plan. So check in your folder, see if you got one of those. Definitely, this is a beautiful tool. 
reason for that and the reason why I like it so much is because when the advisor's looking at it and you're looking at it, you're seeing the exact same thing. You're not looking at one little Excel file while the advisor's looking at another and you're trying to keep notes. Y'all are working off the exact same application and it's live. So you see exactly what the advisor sees. The advisor sees exactly what you see. So that helps with communication and being able to explain where your path is. Here, you're going to have your general student information. You're going to have the breakdown of your degree and what's required for it. You're going to have your core curriculum, your major, and then general electives. All of this is going to be held in that degree plan, and we can help you navigate that. So Canvas, this is your virtual classroom. All of you at this point should have been invited to the advising course. Did y'all see this email, buddy? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's a fail. Um, so we will make sure that the list of people that we have for here today did get their invitation to the advising course. This should be the first class that you see in Canvas. This is our support structure for you to hop into. Like if you're up at two in the morning and you're like, oh my goodness, I forgot what that policy is. You can hop in there and we've got some videos. We've got some helpful tips. You can jump in there and we have a lot of supportive information in there. This is also one of the main areas that the advising team is going to send out announcements for students. So if we have deadlines coming up, your advisor will email you. But we also try to utilize this so that everybody gets the same information. So this one is definitely one of your go-to places to check. And it was built by us, and we put the information there that we know are those frequently asked questions or frequently asked items that our students need help with. So we try to load it with all that helpful information. So the virtual classroom. Once you go into a virtual classroom, this is where you're going to see your assignments. It's going to be where you turn in assignments. It's going to be where you take tests. You're going to get your syllabus, your textbook information, and your grades are going to be there. This is going to be your portal to connect with your classmates, with your instructor, to be able to lay out what you need to do for your eight-week term or for DBA students for your 16-week semester. So definitely get comfortable with Canvas once you get in there. You're going to have a Canvas orientation module that you can take so that you get familiar and comfortable with the system. But make sure, again, if you have any questions, let your advisor know. We go in there and we're doing training ourselves through there. Some of us are instructors as well. So we're very familiar with the system. We will be happy to do a Zoom with you. Or if you're here in person, you can come into the offices and we'll walk you through some of the items. I wanted to share also for students taking uh, in-person classes, you will be utilizing Canvas. Uh, the instructors will be posting their power, the weekly PowerPoints, the syllabus. So all the information will still be really clear, even though you're using in-person. So one of the things with Canvas is in thinking about our school schedules is our weeks run Saturday to Friday. So who has a class that's starting for fall one next Saturday? All right, perfect. You should already be able to log into Canvas and to see the, at least your syllabus and your textbook information, your instructor information for your classes in Canvas. If you don't, definitely let your advisor know. But want to log in that Saturday. Even if you're taking an in-person class that maybe doesn't meet until Wednesday, you want to log in on Saturday and see, do they want you to print out the syllabus? Do they want you to bring a laptop? Do they want you to have already read something from the textbook? So if you're in that in-person class, still log in on that Saturday. And definitely online, you want to log in on Saturday because you're going to find out that those, those deadlines are going to come quick and on week one. So definitely make sure to log in there. Make sure you have all your access as soon as you can. All right, and this kind of goes into conquering the classroom. Connect with your instructor. Our instructors have worked with adult learners and they understand that there's other things and they are willing to listen and to help you and to support you. They will have, if you're online, you will have Zoom office hours that you can do with your instructor. So if you need to meet one-on-one, -on -one, you can still take advantage of that. There isn't this disconnect where you can only talk to them through maybe email. They are willing to meet with you in person if they're here locally or through Zoom so that you can do that one-on-one -on -one coaching. Definitely connect with your classmates. You'll have the option within your classroom to email your classmates if you want to connect with them, if you're doing group projects, if you just want to create like a study group. You can do that through your courses in um, Canvas. Keep up with your assignments. Definitely ask questions. Most importantly, have fun. Have fun, enjoy the time as a student. It can be stressful, but it's very, very rewarding. You can meet new people, you can definitely network. And just the experience of learning, I hope it's gonna be fun for you. And I really wish that for you. Now, attendance, 
So most all of us are used to seeing 16 week semesters. Our program is gonna be pulled into an eight week term. So you'll hear that vernacular. Semester is gonna be your 16 week. Your term is our eight week sessions. DBA students, you are going to be engaged in a 16 week semester where the rest of our students are gonna be in that eight week term. With that, it's not that it is abbreviated. This isn't we've taken work away to fit it into eight weeks. This is accelerated. That 16 weeks worth of work has been condensed down into eight weeks. So when you miss, miss one week of class, one class, this is an entire week. Because if you only meet one time in person, that's the entire week that you've let slip by any kind of information that's going by. And one week in SCS, then you're looking at two weeks. So definitely make sure to get in there, see your syllabus, get those deadlines and plan out and structure what you're gonna do to meet those deadlines. But do keep in mind that this is accelerated. It's not abbreviated. Same amount of work, just a quicker pace. Yes, ma'am. All right, so undergrad and graduate drop policy. So there is no automatic drops. If you find that you need to drop a course, whether it be due to a family situation, maybe you win the lottery, I don't know. But if you need to change your schedule, you have up until the first Friday of week one and 5 p.m. is that cutoff for advisors to process it for you. So you definitely wanna reach out prior to that 5 p.m. deadline because we can only do it up to five. Yes, ma'am. So if our first class is like a Friday night, so that would be, is that still at week one? We don't have any Friday night classes. Woohoo. Friday night class? Yeah. Oh, DBA. Ooh, she will talk about, <laughs> okay. she will, she will touch on DBA. Yeah, this one. Though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm just like, oh, no, no, no. no. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, chill. Just hang out, bring pizza. It'll be fine. Um, no, so undergraduate and graduate, the people with the eight-week terms, okay? Now, for DBA, I can tell you, it is still going to be that week one for the 100% tuition refund. So definitely get in there, look at your syllabus, look at your plan, talk to your instructor see how you feel about the class before that Friday. Um, so drop, difference, you'll hear terms drop and withdrawal. It's just a little bit different. Drop is when the tuition is refunded and that is offered through that week one, that first Friday. Now withdrawal, you can do that up to week six. This comes in handy if you find yourself struggling and you wanna protect your GPA. This is really important for all students, but particularly graduate students you're looking to maintain a 3.0. So if you find yourself struggling at the end of that six weeks, you can withdraw and protect your GPA so it doesn't fall below that 3.0. So keep those in mind. Week one by Friday, if you need to, if you want to just change your schedule and you're going to get that tuition refund or week six, you can withdraw to protect your GPA. Oh, really quick, fall one. Your deadlines are August 23rd and September 29th. Um, September 29th is the no tuition refund deadline. Fall to October 20th for the drop. November 27th for um, withdrawal to protect their GPA. And I'm going to hand it back over to Dr. Seller. Okay, moving on to GBA side of it. So as Christina was mentioning that students can utilize uh, the drop aspects for week one. So again, like she said, we want to be careful with uh, the DBA side of it where you connect with your instructors, you review the class, go into it. I would not recommend doing it the night before. When you, as soon as you see access to it, go into it and see and kind of review the syllabus and say, yes, I'm gonna, this is gonna work for me and my schedule. Or if not, then do it by that week one. Um, th again, there's no automatic drops for DBA also. Um, and it is student initiated. So you would need to go through your advisor, just send your advisor an email, let them know that you're gonna go ahead and need a drop from the class by that Friday of week one. Now, the withdrawal deadline is a little different from the eight-week term. That's going to be week 12 of the semester. So remember, you have a 16-week semester. So the withdrawal deadline for DBA is week 12, okay? And again, uh, that is the Friday of week 12, and you would just notify your academic advisor. So we've listed the 100% uh, drop deadline for DBA is going to be August 25th, and the withdrawal deadline is going to be November 10th. Okay, co main experience. So the DBA program is comprised of uh, 45 hours, so it's 15 classes. So you have 12, uh, 12 classes of, of DBA coursework per se, and then you have nine hours of a co main experience. 
So you can either take the route of a dissertation route or a project-based route. And that's something that you're gonna work with your academic advisor, Valley Vargas, to kind of help guide you on which route you'd like to take. So what I wanna encourage y'all from the front end, DBA students, when all students in general, start building that rapport with your faculty. But DBA side of it, build it with, with your faculty because they're the ones who are gonna help you through either side you choose. So they'll for dissertation, they may be your chair and they'll help you set up your committee, your dissertation committee. Uh, if you do the project base, they will be your mentor. Um, and so they'll help you through your project. You won't have a committee per se, but they'll help you through your different projects that you have. Um, and so a description of each would be for dissertation, it's an, an academic writing of a research topic, which will be approved and you'll work with your committee, your chair and your committee, and they'll help guide you through that process. It'll be approved by them, presented to them and defend it to them as a committee. Now, if you decide to go the non-dissertation route and the project-based route, there's four, uh, three options. You could do a publication, presentation, or a work-based project. So again, this is all in the information. Did you all receive the DBA student handbook? The DBA students in here? You did? Okay, perfect. If you did not, let either myself or Valerie Vargas know and we'll send you the DBA student handbook so you have it. Um, and I cannot stress this enough, always connect with your academic advisor. If you have any question at all, that's what we're here for. We're here to help guide you through this process. You're here to enjoy the academic journey for what it is, okay? Next. So our graduation goals, this goes for all levels, undergrad, grad, doctoral. Uh, you wanna uh, complete the minimum college uh, credits taken, uh, complete the prescribed courses completed, and that's where going through your degree plan will help guide you on what classes you need um, for undergrad and grad. For undergrad, what electives may be uh, on your degree plan. For undergraduate students, you wanna make sure that your community service hours are turned in, because um, that is one of your graduation requirements. Um, seeing if there's electives that are needed. So for undergrad, if you have any uh, elective courses that still need to be completed, maybe not transferred in, or if you're new to the degree itself, again, that's where connecting with your academic advisor and reviewing your degree plan. Um, and submitting the graduation application. So it's not where you complete all the courses and then the registrar knows that you're ready to graduate. No, you have to apply to graduate and then you'll get a, you'll receive an official graduation audit. Again, that is in working with your academic advisor. We'll send you all notifications of when uh, y'all should be receiving information from the registrar's office. The registrar's office will be emailing you all. So this is why it's important that you all continually check your cardinal mail account because all institution initiated email will go to your cardinal mail. Okay? Um, so again, there's all these little nuances to the degree itself, but that's what we're here for, to help you through. And then the graduation policy, like I said, every student must apply to graduate. Uh, applications for graduation can be found in the Banner Web app in your Cardinal apps. And then again, check your email uh, for important emails. If it, it, This is a lot of information. And if you haven't had a chance to look at your Cardinal apps, I would encourage you to review it as soon as you can. If you have any questions, or like you said, you weren't seeing something, reach out to your advisor. The student experience. Um, so you get with your student ID, you get access to Broadway campus amenities. So athletic sporting events, we have football season coming up. I want to invite you to come out uh, if you're locally. Inspector's here. Come bring your families. You get uh, into our athletic events. Um, the student organizations, campus dining, including Chick-fil-A and Starbucks. So we have a Starbucks here and then we have a cafeteria in the SEC. We have a Chick-fil-A in the administration building. So you can use that. The library, we have a library representative, Paul Anderson here. Um, you can check out books uh, with your student ID card. You can rent a, a room, a study space if you need to meet with your group. Do you have a question? Yeah, uh, when you say student ID, are we going to an actual, or just gonna be on student ID? No, it's, it's an actual ID. And I'm gonna go in the next slide. Um, and then there's gym, we have a gym here. A membership fee is required. Next. No. Did it? No. Well, so, did you receive an email to have requested an order for your student ID? Because we had sent that out. Okay. Uh, you can still order the student, or you can still get your student ID either here in the SEC or we have uh, at our Northwest Center, which is the advising center. Okay, so tutoring services. This is one of our resources that we offer students. It's a smart thinking app and it's through Cardinal apps. So we offer uh, tutoring uh, subjects for math, writing, um, computer te technology, business, and then we also offer writing help. So this is live, um, it's virtually, but it's live and you're able to connect with a tutor virtually. And so especially for the writing side of it, you can submit your papers, they can review it, give you feedback, all before you turn in for your final grade. Okay. 
Rave Alerts. This is an important um, app or system that UIW utilizes. If there's any type of a closure or an emergency, uh, UIW notifies all students, faculty, and staff. So just please be sure that you have yours uh, set up with a, your contact information. Um, you must enroll to receive the notifications, and you can find this uh, app in your Cardinal app. So here's the student ID. <laughs> so here's the information. Uh, like I said, you can get it here at the Student Engagement Center or at the Northwest Center. I always recommend that you call ahead just to make sure someone is um, available. I do here at the Student Engagement Center, um, but at the Northwest Center, we have our, our IT person to do that. And it's an actual picture, so they would need you to go in person, okay? And then our locations. So we have our SPS headquarters. And that's where admissions, the admissions office is at. Academic Affairs is located there. Um, it's right here off of McCullough. Uh, I don't know if y'all met some of your admissions counselors as y'all walked in. They were here. We're so uh, excited to have them here. And then we have the Northwest Advising Center off of Data Point. And that's where the classes, in-person classes, will be held at the Northwest Center. And this is also where your entire advising team is located as well. So again, we can meet with you in person. We can meet with you virtually. Um, if, if that's what y'all would like by phone, however, format is most convenient for you all and supportive of y'all, we, we will work with you. Okay. On that, I just want to add for the Northwest Center, we actually have student study rooms. So if you, we're open Monday through Thursday from 8 a.m. to 10, Friday from 8 to 5, and Saturdays from 9 to 1. So if you need just a personal space to come, focused and locked down with a laptop, you are more than welcome to come utilize those spaces. Whatever level you are, undergrad, graduate, or DBA, we have a computer lab if you need to use that. And just like if you wanted to set up a space at the library to study with, you can do that with us at the Northwest Center as well. Yes. Do you need to register? No. No, we have we have we have a good amount of space at the Northwest Center, and it's, I will tell you that because our classes are held there in the evening, if you have a day where you want to come to study by yourself, it's very peaceful as far as you don't have to worry about lots of people coming up and down the halls. Um, so definitely, if you want to come check us out or just come hey, say hi to the advisors, we get lonely. Um, <laughs> you can definitely just come by the Northwest Center. So these are the study rooms. Yes. So this is our undergrad and graduate study room. Uh, so we have an individual study area with the cubicles back there. We have a, a lounge area with the chairs. And then we have a group study area with the three large tables. Um, again, this is undergrad grad. And then we go, and this is the DBA study room as well, the DBA Connection Lounge, where we have four office type settings. Um, you bring your laptop plug and do your, do your work if you'd like a quiet space. Or if you'd like to meet with a, a group, um, you can meet in any of these rooms. You do not need an ID card for this space but you do need an ID card uh, if you're gonna wanna use the library uh, to check out a room in the library, okay? And so the next we have a business office representative. Oh, I'm sorry, you have a question? Yes, ma'am. No, it will work, it will work, yeah. Any other questions? No, okay, business, Jessica? Okay, so we have Jessica Hernandez here representing the business office. And so I want to reiterate again, at the end of this presentation session, we're still having the table and events that you can ask questions and get more information from them. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jessica Hernandez with the business office. Um, so the business office, these are the apps that you would use is eCashNet or CashNet ePayment Center. That's where you're going to set up payment plans, make payments. Uh, you'll also be able to get your invoices from um, that app. Um, if you are planning to come to the campus, uh, you will need to receive a parking permit. We take it from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. So if you plan on visiting possibly the library, uh, you will need a, a parking permit. Um, if you plan on just coming in really quickly, maybe to get your ID, there is a kiosk located in the front of the main campus uh, off of Burr Road. You can stop there. You can let them know that you are coming to get an ID um, and they will direct you to visitor parking. Oh, sorry, um, this is our contact information, um, our business office email, as well as phone number. So if you email the business office, please include your 
a student ID number, meaning your UIW ID number uh, to any email so that we can associate who we are speaking with. A question for the business office that I get from students quite often is when they're using financial aid and they have questions about their financial aid applying, should they contact the financial aid office first or should they contact you guys first? Yes. So uh, if you do, <laughs> so uh, the business office does not handle, of course, your financial aid. So if something is missing uh, for your financial aid, you would definitely want to reach out to financial aid first. Um, our portion is going to be the refund portion. Um, you know, if you're expecting a refund from your financial aid, that's going to be us. So we are the ones who run those for you. Um, we don't process the checks, nothing like that. We um, are going to look at the credits that you have, see if it is that you are owed a refund. Um, so our office, of course, is going to deal with third party billing. Um, your invoicing, payment plans, all of that is coming through our office. So any financial aspect of financial aid, anything like that, um, if you might be missing it, maybe you missed something in your financial aid packet. Um, so you definitely want to reach out to them because they're the ones who would be able to let you know. Thank yeah. You. yeah, of course. Um, also, if it, anyone using third-party billing to... Do we have any USAA employees? Okay, so, or if an employer is paying your tuition, you definitely want to reach out to the business office. Um, my USAA employees, you are going to receive a letter of credit. You will email that to the business office. Um, of course, include your ID number with that letter of credit. We bill after the 100% drop date. So that is the week after classes begin. Um, we will start billing. Um, I know that it takes up to six to eight weeks to receive payment. So if a student has a balance, we will actually notify you via your cardinal email, and we will let you know that you have a balance. Please, if you have a balance and you are like, hey, I shouldn't have a balance, my employer said they paid, please contact our office and let us know that you have a balance or, um, for whatever reason, they might not have paid and we have to kind of figure out. So all students uh, sign a financial responsibility agreement. Um, this basically makes you responsible if your third party is not going to pay, if financial aid doesn't cover the full balance, uh, you know, you, it'll say that you are financially responsible for, for that balance. You mentioned the 100% drop deadline. Um, now, we have a lot of students that get discounts. Those discounts, when do they generally see those applied to their tuition bill? They, sh you should see your your discount. My apologies, Christina. Um, you should see your discount. Um, apply that first week. Um, of classes, of classes. Okay. Yes. Now, any tuition discounts will be through SPS. So, um. USAA, any tuition discount would be applied. Now, any military discount will be applied through our office. So that is the veterans and active duty. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, of course. Oh, I have one question. Oh, sorry. Okay. Do we have parking permit for both campuses or no? No. Okay. No. Okay, so it's for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Do we have any questions here? I didn't see. Oh, okay. okay. So this is our, our financial aid office contact information. Um, again, like Jessica mentioned, if you're all using financial aid, always check the award. Um, I recommend you getting into your, your cardinal apps, looking at your bill prior to the start date of your classes to try to sprout anything. Um, if it's through MBA or uh, military pay, military benefits or uh, work benefits or financial aid. Um, so this is their contact information. Next, we have MBA military. We have Jonathan and Carissa. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is John Lovejoy, and Chris and I are here uh, from the Military and Veterans Center. Uh, a little bit about uh, UIW and, and SPS. Uh, We've got about, this fall, we're expecting about 1,500 students uh, that are military connected. And when I say that, we've got active duty, we've got veterans, and we got the military connected family members. SPS has amazing benefits for the military. 
uh, reduce tuition and things like that. So uh, what we do is we take care of that whole family of, of folks. Uh, we have, uh, we're available virtually online. We've got a center right on the third floor here uh, where we take care of all, of all of your needs. And when I say that, you've got to navigate sort of some, some challenges there in, in the military uh, financial uh, world. Uh, you know, we've got the active duty, but there are certain things that that branch of service, there's requirements that the branch of service has uh, that we work with you and help you with that process. Uh, Cardinal apps, we have two apps that we'll talk about uh, that, that help you with that. One for the students using VA benefits, and we have family members using those VA benefits that, that were passed on to them. Uh, and that we also have an app for the uh, tuition assistance to, to help with that. So specifically what we're doing to help you navigate is we have folks that can use either benefit uh, and they can go back and forth. Uh, we also uh, support all our ROTC cadets. So we have folks in SPS that are doing ROTC benefits. And then we even have folks that are doing, uh, the majority of them are Army, but we also have some Air Force folks. So we're supporting the SPS students that are say doing uh, Air Force ROTC and they're cross-towning with UTSA. So a lot of area, a lot of uh, stuff that we do, but we have an incredible amount, uh, an incredible team and an, an incredible support network. So I'll turn it over to Krista to give you some more specific information and then I'll wrap it up at the end. Yeah, sure thing. So hello everybody again, my name is Krista. I'm one of the school certifying officials and veteran service specialists here at UIW. Um, essentially what John said, we are here to service our military connected families. So we wanna make sure to make this transition from you, if those, especially those who are coming out of service into the um, civilian world and especially the educational world, it is a big jump for some of you. So we wanna make that jump smooth and easy as possible. Um, we do process VA benefits and we do process TA. For those of you using VA benefits, if you um, don't know where to start, the best place to start would actually be filling out that form, that VA certification request form found in Cardinal Apps Portal. And for TA, same thing, make sure to fill out that TA form online as well. Um, if you are military connected, um, even a dependent, and you're like, I may have something, I may have some entitlement, um, my husband, my wife, my parent, I don't know what I could possibly be entitled to. Can you help me start that process? Definitely. Now, one thing I would like to make very clear, we are not the VA. We are just the middleman between the school and the VA. Um, so we cannot do any of the actual awarding portion or entitlement portion. So it's very, very, very important for you to touch base with us to see what we will require from you to provide documentation wise to help start that process of your VA benefits. Um, VA is not going to provide anything on your behalf, so we want to make sure that you know exactly what you need to give to us and what you need to get from VA or even how to start with VA to figure out what you're entitled to. Um, our, our office is not solely processing VA benefits in TA, though we wear a lot of different hats and we have a lot of different programs that come out of our office. Great programs, specifically um, our PAVE program, which you see up here, it's our Care Advisors for Veterans Education. We basically um, assign you and team you up with a peer who's been through a similar program or branch of service you've been through. They're kind of that good point of contact to have if you have any questions. Um, and then we also have our School of uh, Student Veterans of America, essentially our SVA program. So um, if you have anybody, if you want to meet with other veterans, um, other family member dependents, essentially, who meet once a month on campus, um, they do a lot of work on campus, a lot of um, work with the VFW. It's a great place to kind of find your community. And we really, really, really want you to feel welcomed and a part of this community. We want you to come on to main campus. I know specifically for SPS students, it's very hard to feel connected to main campus, but we want to bridge that gap and really invite you to come and meet your SBOs, meet your community of veterans here and help you feel welcomed. And so if you have any questions at all, any concerns, anything at all, please come and talk to us. We're happy to help. And those who are specifically using uh, Chapter 33 and Chapter 31, I just want to throw this out there. If you are using either of those two benefits and you have questions regarding your bill, do not go to the business office first, come to us first. <laughs> come to us first, because if we call them, they're going to say, you really want to speak with the MVC. So we want you to come to us first. But other than that, um, thank you so much for your time. And thank you to those who have served our country. We really, truly appreciate appreciate you and give you know give you so much thanks and, and we're so appreciative of you so I hope you stop by my desk over there so thank you so much and the uh to, to wrap it up too there's lots of events that go on throughout the uh the year so like right here you can see this is at our military appreciation football game and those are actually our end zones we were the first division one school to have camouflage end zones a very interesting trivia and you can see like our military and veteran folks that are holding that flag around the edge so but there's lots of other events we have we've had lecture series we have book series Lots of stuff going on. So you'll get those all via email and you'll see them uh, coming out and, and we put it out on social media. So I don't know if we plugged our social media, but 
follow our social follow and our newsletters. Social media. Our newsletter goes out to everybody on email and it's even shared now with SPS. So please look at that newsletter. That is like where all of our updates are at, all of our events for the year are at. And then also we have our August 15th orientation, which I forgot to also put. Oh, okay. so please RSVP for that. I do have the RSVP available over there. So if you haven't signed up yet, please stop by the table and sign up and we're happy to see you next week. Because there's so many opportunities in San Antonio and around the country that we, we put out through the newsletter and through social media. Because yeah. we don't want to overload your emails with, hey, there's an opportunity, Veterans Day Parade, if you want to march in or whatever it is, or there could be a scholarship opportunity that we get a short notice on. We'll just send that out to you guys uh, via social media and email. Yeah, so we'll All overload right. you on newsletters. Yes, <laughs> read the newsletter. It's long, but has lots of great information. So much information, please. So, um... okay, okay. Yes, 11 11. It is on uh, Veterans Day. Yeah. That's Saturday. And so, I would actually say that and, the tailgating event that we have at that particular and, game is one of the best. One, I, would, it, I would just say that. I would, and, and SPS is going to be there too. So. We, we are always fantastic in our athletics. And so the folks that are online don't think you can't participate because you can watch it. We do, they stream the games. So you can see those football games online. So. And y'all have an awesome lounge for the veterans to come take. Oh, and right. we have after hours access now. So for those of you who do want access to the lounge after hours, we do close at five, but that lounge, we want it to be open for you. If you need a quiet space to come by and visit, um, you would just have to come visit our office and we can program your student ID. And that way you have that after hours access here on campus. You don't even have to run it through a reader. It's just hold the card close, the Texas thing, and the door opens. And you have access. Yeah, we're not even there to bother you. So you can get a free <laughs> cup of fun. coffee. Yeah, coffee, snacks, anything else. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Oh, I'll follow you. So I don't know if y'all are getting the gist. There, we have a lot of lounges for students. <laughs> <laughs> if you want shooting, come visit us. <laughs> here earlier. So this is our student disability services uh, information. If you need uh, to register with them or need any type of accommodations, we recommend that you reach out to them. Um, they have a whole host of accommodations that they can provide students, uh, virtual and in person as well. One thing that I don't think students think about with student disability services is if you have a medical procedure while you're in class, like you end up having surgery, that can get you an accommodation. You know, if you break your arm, you're not gonna be able to type as much. So you might want to check out with them and see what kind of accommodations they can do for you. They do help students as much as they can, and our instructors are very willing to work with those. So while you might not have something you want to utilize now, if something happens in the future, you can reach out to them and get some assistance. They're a great resource. And we have the Atlanta Center for Civic Leadership. Okay, great. We have Robert here. Hello, everybody. My name is Bobby San Martin, and I'm the program specialist at the Edling Center. So I'm sure you're probably like, what is the Edling Center? <laughs> so in order to graduate, you're required 45 hours of community service. So our office helps find, facilitate, and approve those hours for you. A lot of questions that we get from undergrad students, what counts as community service hours? Basically, rule of thumb, if it's for a nonprofit or for the good of the community, and as, not, as long as you're not getting reimbursed for your time, that will count towards your community service hours. We also have a platform that's called Give Pulse. So Give Pulse is in your Cardinal app and it's utilized to track your personal service hours. So every time you volunteer somewhere, you log into Give Pulse, you in, enter the info of what you did for your community service hours. It comes to us, we verify everything and then we approve it. So it's kind of like a running tally of your community service hours. So like I said, you need 45 hours and if you put in 10 hours, it's gonna deduct those 10 hours from the 45, so you still need 35 hours. Um, anybody have any questions like about community service hours of what would count in particular? Yes. Total. So it's 45 total. So you do have the whole time of, that you're in school to finish, but people don't realize that the semester that you're graduating in, the hours are due the week of classes. So if you're graduating in December, you need to make sure the first week of classes that you start for that semester, you have your hours completed. What happens is if you don't have your requirement for that, it puts a delay on your graduation. So you could lose like graduation tickets. There could be fees associated with it. 
And if you wait long enough that you might not even get your name on a diploma. And that's all handled by the registrar's office, but that just, it does take time to get those things ordered and processed. So it's a rule of thumb that we always encourage students, your first year, try to get 15 hours, second year, third year, and before you know it, you're already done. That way you can enjoy your senior year and not have to worry about community service hours. Because I get to see firsthand how stressed students are weeks before, or like this summer, for example, the 27th is the deadline, and they're like trying to get 45 hours. And they're working full time or it's summer, they're not here, and they're trying to like get this in so they can graduate. So it can be a very stressful and it can hamper your, your graduation. So we encourage y'all to find places to volunteer. If you're unsure, reach out to us, just give us a call, email, and we'll say, yeah, that's one of our, you know, that, that would definitely work towards your community service hours. On Give Post, we do have a bunch of opportunities listed. Um, there are a bunch of our service partners that we have MOUs with. You're not limited to volunteering for them, but you can use it as like a template or a guideline. So if you're not in San Antonio, for example, and we have San Antonio Food Bank, which is one of our partners, and you're in Corpus or in Houston, you can volunteer at your local food bank, and it would be equivalent one-to-one -one for the hours. Yes, ma'am. And is there any restriction on like getting them all done your first semester? No. There's no limitation on the number of hours. Um, there's no limitation on the number that you can earn. Obviously, there's only 24 hours in a day, and usually the most that I see is between eight to 10 hours. I've, I have seen 12 hours before, and those are extreme circumstances where students are trying to get their hours done within like a five-day period. So I don't know. I mean, they, they were able to finish it, but it is, it is uh, stressful on the student. Um, also, the previous presenter was talking about the veterans. So anything for our veterans, while enlisted, anything that you performed while enlisted will count towards your community service requirement. So a lot of y'all don't know this, but um, there's a lot of extra activities we understand that you do while enlisted that's off the clock or on your personal time. Just get any type of end of year report or um, try to gather as much information as you can, fill out the form and you can submit it to us and you can apply those hours towards your requirement. Yes. Yeah. No. So this is the 45 hour graduation requirement for volunteer hours is specifically for undergraduate only. Yeah. Undergrad. Now, now <clears throat> service is one of our five values as a university. And so we're very big as an institution on service, giving back, being active in the community. So although this is required for undergrad, I want to highly encourage you that you still give back and be involved in your community. Um, that's the best way to like Sister Martha Ann said, be compassionate in your community. So you can still volunteer and submit it if you'd like, but it's not a graduation requirement for graduate or doctoral. And what I tell students that are in graduate class classes that like to volunteer with us, I encourage them to add that onto Give Post because it's kind of like your personal record. So when you go to that time and you graduate and you're trying to create your resume, you can print all the activities that you volunteered in. And a lot of companies actually look at that to see as an addition, like, oh, this person is giving back to the community. It's actually volunteering and it has all the breakdowns. So there's no extra legwork on your end because it's already in your profile. So that's just an added bonus. Some of the other- really isn't like a UIW specific. Right. It is nationwide, right. correct? So when you go in there, it's almost like a social media for, right. for doing volunteer work. So it's two words, give, pulse. I know it kind of sounds, it merges together, but UIW has their own internal give, pulse network. If you were to log in now on the outside and you could go to give, pulse for the community. And the one for the community sometimes syncs up with our university and other universities. There's other universities that use it as well. But what we tend to do is keep ours internal unless we're bringing in outside volunteers. So what you see posted might not be posted in the community give polls platform, or we can share it with them and bring in more volunteers that way. So we always, it's very important that when you access give polls, access it through UIW Cardinal app, because that takes you directly to your portal within the network. If you access outside and put your info there and submit your hours, we'll never see it. You know, unless you send an email and say, hey, I sent it here and we have to redirect you to submit it back to the one through the UIW network. Um, some of the things that we've done and, and do is we try to encourage um, community-based 
volunteering that gets you connected with the community. We do a lot of mission trips, so that's really big. So if a lot of you are into mission trips, you can get a, a chunk of hours knocked out. Plus you get to go places maybe that you've never been before. So we go to the Rio Grande Valley twice a year. We do a winter and we do a summer. The winter one is more uh, medical oriented. So we bring a lot of new uh, nursing students, optometry students. This year we're looking to expand it for like physical therapy, nutrition. And now we basically set up a little clinic with triage we do about a three-day uh, visual screen for the patients down there. The summer one is more hands-on interactive with the children in the community, helping out with documentation, paperwork, um, eating habits, just getting them comfortable, even helping them just set up an email account. So going down there has really been useful, and we work with a company or a program called Arise. So we're looking to expand both those programs. We also travel to Oaxaca yearly. So this is a collaboration with Christus Santa Rosa. There was a group of physicians that started this program um, probably about 33 years ago. And it was about four physicians that started going down to Oaxaca. Well, they went to Monterey, then to Oaxaca, and it's expanded within the Christus network. And they just, they reached out because we're in the same um, family, you know, Christus and Incarnate Word. And we started off bringing five optometry students to help with the clinic. And the clinic is a five-day clinic. It's nine days that we go down there and it's a full triage. Uh, we see about 3,000 patients in, in five days. The first week, the first year that we went with the five students, they came back just life changed, altered. They started seeing things that they only saw in textbooks. They learned more in the five days than they, than they did in two years of rotation. They were just like mind blown. So from the five, we progressed to 14, we progressed to 20. Uh, this past year, for example, we were up to 49. Um, that's faculty, staff, and students. So Christus brings about 60 people along. And then with our, our sister dental school in Mexico, they bring about 20 students. So we're well over 125 people that we go. Um, if you're able to attend one of these, this is one that's life tra transforming and really impactful to the community down there because we're basically their only medical connection that they have for the entire year. So we, we help them. There's a lot of diabetes, there's uh, trigiums, there's cataracts, a lot of eye disease, a lot of health issues. Um, we go to Brazil, for example. That's one of our other ones. We went to Puerto Rico. Um, let's see. We're looking to go to Africa this year. So we have a lot of uh, service opportunities. If you know, It's just not the run of the mill, like I'm going to go here, sit and type something out for somebody. You can always volunteer in our office. The other good thing is, too, is we're an official partner of the San Antonio Food Bank. So San Antonio Food Bank, we actually have what's called the Cardinals Covered. It's on campus in our office. So we have two locations. One's in Joris. It's one of the dorm halls here. And the other one's in the administration building. This is not only open to students, but it's open to the whole community, faculty, staff, employees, uh, communities. So we get a lot of people that come in from outside the city, around the city, that come in looking for resources. We're also looking for volunteers. So if you have class, if you have a two-hour uh, gap between your class break, you can reach out to our office and say, hey, I want to come in and help volunteer for an hour. And basically, it's just help organizing our donations, help organizing our food, or possibly help pass out food to people in need. So this is a good opportunity for you to pick up hours. If you were to do this three or four times a month, by the end of the semester, you got your 15 hours. So just don't wait to the end. Don't wait to the last minute. <laughs> Get it out. I've seen so much stress, and I've actually seen students that have been pushed uh, push back to the next semester for our graduation. Anybody have any questions about anything that I was talking about? Well, if, you, if, if, if you're in the area, stop by. Um, um, if you need a place to uh, sit and type and do homework, we have extra space. We're open, it's a friendly place, you know? Like we actually do get a lot of students, they, they walk by and they're like, what's this office? And they're like, well, it's the Edling Center, we do volunteer. And they're like, wow, it's so quiet or it's so lively in here. It's like, can I come in and, and work on, can I print something or can I can I finish this paper? And they're like, yeah, sure, help yourself. But feel free to stop. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to also share that uh, with the food pantry that Bobby was talking about, the Northwest Center, the advising center, has a food pantry as well. We have a nest, so it's available. Although the uh, food closet is open to the community, the one at the Northwest Center is right now open to the UIW community. So students, faculty, staff, no questions asked, just come on in. You don't need to make an appointment. Um, you can get food. We have the food pantry. We also uh, do a collection for animals. 
little animal pantry. Um, and then we have a clothing closet in collaboration with um, career services as well. So we have those at Northwest. Yes. If you wanted to donate towards those mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Just drop off. We have two big bins in the front, one for pets and one for, for humans. And you can just <laughs> drop off your donation. Um, you can also bring clothing, um, don't use clothing as well. If you, we initially started it for, um, for those students that needed something to wear for like interview sessions or whatnot, but we've expanded it to just clothing in general. So that's available. Okay, and then I think we have Moises. Moises is here for Student Disability Services. He's gonna share some information with us. Thank you. First of all, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the University of the Incarnate Word. Uh, my name is Moises Torres Canon, Director of Auxiliary Academic Services. That includes testing services, which some of you may or may not get to use, and student disability services, which many of you will probably use. Um, welcome to the University of the Incarnate Word, and we're very happy to know that you have continued, or that you have decided actually, to pursue the rest of your professional career at the University of the Incarnate Award. So um, I was told I only have five minutes. So I'm gonna make my presentation <laughs> very brief. Um, student Disability Services is located in the administration building, um, uh, uh, room 51. Uh, the process to apply for accommodations is quite simple. Some of you may already have are receiving accommodations in your from your previous institution. That is very simple. In the webpage of the university, uh, there's a, if you go to the university's webpage, where it says student support on the second menu on your left, you're gonna find student disability services. It's very simple to apply. Click there and you're gonna see the page of the university of the student disability service. And you wanna look for where it says, requests for accommodations. This is very simple, three steps. Number one, the first thing you will have to submit is your documentation. Um, if you're already receiving accommodations, that's well, you probably have that. Second, uh, you wanna fill out a form, uh, uh, a request actually. They will take you maybe five minutes to do it. Within that form, you wanna request an appointment with us because we think it's very, very important if you have a disability, it's very important for us to meet with you in person. Actually, the meeting doesn't have to be in person. It could be you know, by Zoom, which we've been having many, many meetings like that throughout the summer, because we wanna to get to know you. We want to know what are some of the barriers that you're encountering in your, in your education and how we might be able to, to assist you. And then the third, the third stop, the third point of your application process is for you to tell us in that form, what are some of the barriers that you are having right now? And uh, what are some of the accommodations that you are receiving? We have, um, uh, we serve uh, all the university, including the you know, uh, uh, health profession schools. And unfortunately we don't have time, but we could tell you wonderful stories about students that have received or have many, many challenges for various reasons and have become very, very successful. So our job is to make sure that you're successful. If you're not successful, we're not successful. So we're in the business of creating um, successful stories. So welcome again to the University of the Incarnate Award. I'm gonna be here a while yet. If you have any specific questions, I'll be glad to answer them for you. Thank you very much. Brian Richardson with Career Services. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Brian Richardson. I'm the Director of Career Services. So for me, this is day 31. So I'm new <laughs> to the university. Um, and so I'm so happy to be here. So happy to talk to you today about the services that our office uh, provides. Um, and so a couple of things I want you to really uh, play, uh, pay close attention to. Um, there's an a, a acronym there or, or an icon there that says Handshake. So Handshake is a platform that's a part of Cardinal Apps. So yes, there's an app for that as well. <laughs> um, so if you go to the Cardinal Apps platform and, and uh, go into Handshake, you'll be able to see uh, the list of our not only our services, but also our various events that, 
that we um, work with employers on. So everything from a career fair. So we do have a virtual career fair um, that is coming up in October. So there'll be between two to 300 um, employers. Um, they are representing their organizations um, uh, uh, with jobs and internships and other opportunities. Um, there's also other related events. So for example, we host an etiquette dinner here on campus, uh, usually every semester as well. And so a number of students will come to the campus to participate in some of those sorts of things. But beyond that, we offer uh, other uh, career consulting sort of services, everything in relation to I'm making the pivot in my career and I'm trying to figure out how can I use my education and other resources in order to further my career in, in a different direction, or I'm trying to go to the next level in my career and really trying to figure out what steps I need to take in order to do that. So we offer career assessments and other tools that will help to guide you through that process. And if necessary, um, we can work with our uh, alumni office to connect you with various alums that might be in various spaces. And I know the uh, School of Professional Studies has alumni uh, as well. And so being able to make those connections for you so you can talk about things in relation to your career journey. So within that app, um, there's an area where you can actually schedule appointments to meet with our career advisors, both uh, in person, which our office is located next to a lounge, so next to the, <laughs> next to the uh, Military and Veterans Center Lounge. So we're right on the third floor up here. So um, if you ever wanted to come to campus to meet with us in person, you're able to do so uh, Monday through Friday from eight to five, but also you can schedule virtual appointments as well. And so all of that is directly through that platform. Um, and we'll be able to discuss uh, the various needs that we um, have or the, the various needs that you might have as well. Um, there were some other things that were mentioned. So someone mentioned earlier resumes and I sort of perked up uh, when, when that was mentioned. So we do um, offer that guidance uh, for uh, reviewing resumes. Um, we also offer uh, cover letter reviews, uh, mock interviews. So if you're applying for any sort of roles or positions and need some professional assistance with that, um, we have those sorts of services. And it was also mentioned er earlier and I perked up again, um, that we also have a, a career closet. And so um, if, if you're uh, in, the, in the business of either donating items, you can bring those to our center. Um, or if you need some sort of professional attire for an interview or some sort of uh, thing of that nature, uh, we do have that as a free service to you um, as students. And so, um, as I mentioned, our office is located on the third floor of this building. Um, and we'll be happy to serve you in any way um, that we can. So do I have any sort of questions, um, thoughts, and concerns? Yes. Yes. Um, you, for the mock interviews or other cover letters like that, do you have a graph on federal side of it because those interviews are so different? Yes. Yeah, so we do, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, we do have resources specifically for federal resumes. We also have a space on the website where there's all materials um, related to um, the career path and professional correspondence for things that uh, go through that. But we, we are um, trained in that area and we work really closely uh, with our uh, military and veteran center. And, and, and on that same line, if we have any sort of uh, correspondence that may come in for events and other things that are career related, that are specific for our military affiliated students, we usually pass that over to the Military and Veteran Affairs Center. But if you do log into Handshake, um, sometimes Handshake will send you specialized events as well on an ongoing basis straight to your email. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, yes, yes. Um, part, part of uh, the process of getting out of the military more recently is now that they have uh, internship programs for military. Do you guys help out with that as well? Yes, so we do um, have relationships with various offices and everything of that nature. So if you come in and schedule an appointment, we can help guide you through that process to show you what internships are, are available, uh, what organizations that we're connected with and have partnerships with, um, so you can take advantage of that and the preparation for that process. So understanding, so sometimes uh, individuals may be trying to figure out how to convert um, their federal resume into more of a civilian uh, related resume. And so we're able to help with that sort of transition and how to guide and, and direct you in that path. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts? 
Fine. When is the next JCPenney night out? Oh, that is, I got my events here. Um, that is coming up in September. Where are you? Okay. It is September 9th um, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Thank you for bringing that up as well. We do a lot of stuff. Um, so that uh, JCPenney uh, event that uh, was mentioned is called our SULIP event. And so that's going to be at the JCPenney North Star Mall. Um, and during that time, there are a lot of discounts that are available for uh, professional clothing, but also they do a, a whole store-wide event. So we'll have a table there. You can come and greet us. We'll have some nice giveaways, bring the whole family, because a lot of uh, employees have access to it as well. Um, so a lot of folks will bring their families and do some shopping and, and go throughout the mall and that sort of thing. So that's something that we have available that we work with JCPenney as well. Do they do headshots at that night, or do they still do that? No, our headshots um, are actually during a. Uh, there's there's some headshots we don't we didn't organize the one on Monday, uh -huh. uh, but our LinkedIn workshop and headshot event is on October 18th, and so we'll have um, headshots available there uh, for that particular event. So that's the one we're organizing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, how are y'all doing today? All right, my name is Paul Anderson, and I'm uh, representing the libraries. Uh, maybe Library is the main campus library. It's actually just catty corner from here. And um, I spoke with a lot of you, or, or some of y'all today. I think most of y'all are business majors. Would that seem pretty fair? Okay, so I'll be your librarian, um, undergrad, graduate, uh, DBA program as well. So uh, that's my contact information. Uh, best way to get a hold of me is through email. If you're needing any research help, trying to find uh, scholarly articles, um, if you're trying to find, uh, you know, like for business, like a SWOT analysis or any kind of industry reports, I can help you with that. Um, we can meet one to one if you are around on campus or a lot of the times I'll meet uh, on Zoom, set up a meeting. And then, you know, it could be 30 minutes. It could be an hour. It just depends on, uh, you know, what, what your information needs are. But as far as our, our physical library, um, we're open seven days a week. We're open uh, Sunday through Thursday till midnight. We also have a, a ton of quiet study space, as well as if you bring your UIW uh, ID card, which you'll need for the library, um, you can check out group study rooms as well. So if you're collaborating with the group, um, we have group study rooms where you can meet and discuss and go about uh, uh, working on your project. Yes. Is there like a Zoom available if one of your group partners is not here? You could, I mean, we have probably most students will probably bring like their laptops and things like that. So yeah, you could do something like that. We we do um besides just you know checking out books and things like that, we do offer some technology you can check out. Uh, for instance, we have tablets you can check out for uh, for a few days and so forth. Um from our, our library website. Uh, we'll have a lot of information. Um, there's other subject specialists that we do have. And uh, we also have um, on our, under our quick links, which is on our left hand side, we'll have what, what are called research guides. And to me, they're kind of like, they're sort of like cheat sheets. Um, you can find like your, your topic or discipline. And then it's going to kind of guide you and outline you as far as where, how to find books. But most of our collection is going to be like 99% online. So it's, how do you find electronic books? How do you access those? How do you go into databases? What's a database? There's gonna be a ton of journal articles within there that can help you for your research papers. Um, we'll have links to different like writing and citing, um, either for, for undergraduate writing or graduate writing. Um, we'll have uh, guides for APA style and things of that nature that can really help you all out a lot. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Do you have any questions for me? Okay, and then um, also I know some of the classes are over at the Northwest Center. So we actually do have four libraries uh, total. 
the Northwest Center, uh, where some of the classes will be. Um, you have to check with their hours, but we do have a library there, so you can use that as a study space as well. And it sounds like they have a lounge there too. And uh, and uh, yes, uh huh. Yeah, hours of operation. Like I said, I think we open like around seven, basically. Uh, like Monday through Friday, we open at seven. Uh, I know Sunday through Thursday, we're we're open till midnight. Um, Saturdays, I think we'll be open from like at least nine to six. Uh, we'll be open to at least eight o'clock on Friday nights. Yeah. So yeah, just you know, we don't take a break on the on the weekend. So we'll be there for you. Um, and then also, uh, we also offer a chat service too. So. There's ways you can contact our uh, contact our reference desk uh, via phone, uh, via email, uh, which is listed up here. But then also we offer a chat service online. So if you just want to talk to somebody um, and ask, you know, questions about how to access something or question about the library or anything like that, we're there to help you as well. Also, too, um, there's other ways. If we don't own something in the library, we can always try to get it for you. Um, one thing we can't get are like business reports that are very expensive. Uh, we, we wouldn't have any money left over for anything else. <laughs> so if you go to, if you go to Google and, uh, you know, you Google and you find a report that sounds like this wonderful report, and then you look to pay and it's like 5,000 bucks. Yeah. We can't buy that report for, for you, but we can find you a lot of things that can help you, um, as far as, uh, we can offer what's called interlibrary loan which means we can get it from another library for you. Uh, we offer something called a tech share card um, where it's reciprocal uh, borrowing from other libraries uh, here in, in Texas. So um, there's a lot of stuff we can help you with. Just you know, utilize our services and um, you know we want them to succeed, do really well. So and that's definitely these resources aren't limited to the students that are here just in San Antonio that come to the physical library. We have no, not at all. Students that are joining us online as well, right? Definitely. Now, so. Yeah. So a lot of the yeah, a lot of the program, a lot of our services, or a lot of our collections, like ninety nine percent online. And then, uh, like I said, I meet a, I meet a lot of students via Zoom. Um, work out stuff that way. Um, accessing everything uh, as far as our databases and electronic books. It's just like how you would log into Cardinal apps. So you'd be asked for like a username, password. And you just sign in, sign in using that. So, um, yeah. So you, you know, off campus, it's twenty four seven for you. So you wake up at four in the morning and start your, your homework, your research. Yeah, yeah I guess coffee. Yeah, coffee would be uh, yeah tea for me, but yeah, coffee. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're here. We're here for y'all. So thank y'all very much. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. We have Jackie coming up from Office of Research and Graduate Studies, but I wanted to say, she stepped out real quick, uh, her question about the DBA Zoom rooms. So we have those for um, at the Northwest Center. So let's say we have our uh, virtual students working with local students. You can utilize room 112, room 114. Those are set up for uh, Zoom rooms. So thanks. thanks. We have Duncan here. Hi, I'm Duncan Hayes, uh, Office of Research and Graduate Studies. Um, so um, we are physically located here on campus in the administration building, and you've been pointed to that a lot. A lot of you are online. Um, we're also very much online. Um, and uh, I can't brag about a lounge. We, <laughs> we are adjacent to Chick-fil-A, and we're adjacent to a nice courtyard in the administration building where we often repair to go out and sit at the tables under the nice big oak tree that's out there. Um, and um, if you're online, you can just manage that. But anyway, <laughs> Office of Research and Graduate Studies, we have a dual nature. Um, we collaborate with uh, units across campus, across the university system. We're used to thinking of um, UIW as a system now. We're not used to thinking of it anymore as just a place that's on the ground that has classes that you go to. We're online. We're around the world. 
um, we have a global presence, we have a uh, physical presence, we have a lot of people spread across San Antonio, as you've seen down in Corpus Christi, um, a large presence there. We have a population of students that spans the globe. Um, so we're in many ways a global university at this point, and we're becoming more spread out that way, I think, in general. Um, our function as this dual nature office is to think of students and to support students in all of their graduate studies activities. I'm sorry, uh, we don't dismiss undergraduates at all. We think about undergraduate. We're heavily involved in, um, our office got heavily involved in um, helping the faculty across the university system prepare curriculum for their programs. And also we support program development in the sense of a faculty making curriculum, making it a program for you to come and consume. Um, so we support that at the undergraduate and the graduate level. So we are not by any means exclusive to graduate students, although I'm going to speak mostly about the graduate level support we offer. Um, so for you, those of you who hear from DBA, uh, from, from all of the uh, graduate programs, this is focused mostly on you. We do have services for students that have not been mentioned um, uh, so far. We do have a writing support um, portal that's open to all graduate students, regardless of their where you are in the world, okay? You can access this, go to our website. We have a link there um, for graduate writing, okay? And um, there's a way to access this system, create an account, sign in, and you can access our writing support specialists both online and in person, depending on your location. Um, so any anytime you have um, an assignment um, where a uh, faculty says, write me a APA formatted paper uh, and turn it into me next week, and it's gotta be five pages, and you have no clue what to do, or you have no idea what APA is, and you don't know of other resources, like the library, for example, where you can get quick access, you come to us, come to our writing portal. Um, those people are prepared to help you. Um, other parts of the graduate support that we do are registration. We help you stay in touch with your program. It's often difficult for part-time adult learners to keep up with all of these uh, kind of bureaucratic requirements that you've encountered. We are an institution. We have our rules and regulations. We have our procedures you have to follow. Um, and oftentimes you forget that there are policies that govern your attendance in our university. So we're here to help you navigate all of that. All you have to do is contact us. We'll help you with questions about registration, questions about admission to a program. Say if you've been dismissed for a program for whatever reason, and you go, I wanna get back in, come to us for graduate students, okay? Um, we'll help you. Uh, registration, staying in your program. Some of you, I hope it doesn't happen to uh, you, I mean, but it inevitably does because life uh, gets in the way. You will reach a point maybe in a course or a program where you'll have to stop out. And um, you, how do you do that, okay? How do you stop your program? And then if you stop a program, did you follow the right procedures? And then if you didn't follow the right procedures, what penalties are you going to incur? Okay, oftentimes you stop out of a program and it's too late to uh, pass the withdrawal date, you're gonna pay financial penalties. Um, there are lots of things about navigating university processes that you really need to keep up with and it's impossible to because you have 90, 90 other things to do in the limited time you have. So you've seen the other uh, resource offices, other administrative offices, give uh, information here. We are similar to that in our, our relationship to graduate students, that we're here to help you with all of that, but primarily around curriculum, attendance in your program, uh, and um, 
uh, we'll refer you, happily refer you to all of the other appropriate offices, like for financial aid or questions about getting your degree. Where is my degree? How come they haven't given it to me yet? We'll help you navigate all those processes. Um, that's just what we do. Part of our part of our work is uh, to collaborate with other offices and to make it as clear as possible for you all students to understand how the university works in relation to all these other offices. And so we are doing our best to keep an open channel of communication with all the other offices in the university, administrative offices, and all of your curriculum programs. Your program directors are going to be your advisors primarily. On SPS, you have your own separate advisors. They talk to you about curriculum. But if you have any other questions beyond what the advisors can tell you, we're the people to come to with those questions about curriculum. Now, uh, the other aspect of our office is research. And I want to mention this to you because this applies to undergraduates and graduates. Um, we support the concept, of, we support research across the university for all aspects. Now, research is not something you necessarily thought of when you began to attend a program, but research is something that you might actually get involved with as you attend your program, and especially if you're a DBA and you start doing a uh, dissertation, then you're going to get involved um, at the very least with the sort of mechanical process of um, applying for IRB review. Okay, it's another thing that we administer. But basically, the research aspect of our office, we help all the university populations, students, faculty, staff, whoever's involved with research projects, um, we help them understand where to find resources for the research you want to do, financial and uh, intellectual, or as it were, research. We work closely with the library um, on, 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 on finding uh, uh, academic resources for your research, but also faculty. Um, we administer various kinds of awards through our office for students and for faculty, uh, financial awards, um, research awards, um, and for a list of those, for, for information about those, you can go to our office website, which is uiw.edu slash ORGS, and you will find everything you need to know. Um, so the whole comprehensive area for you as uh, graduate students, the, the areas of research administration are something that you probably really need to get involved with and know about. Uh, like I said, especially at the DBA level, if you're doing, um, going to be planning on doing a dissertation. And by the way, if you do a dissertation or a master's thesis, that has to be uh, written. It is requirement of the university that you have to publish it in the university libraries. We have a database where all of these are deposited at the end of your academic career. It's called the FNM. It's part of the uh, uh, university libraries. Uh, you can access it through the library um, database. Uh, they have a button on the right side of their web page called the Athenaeum, named after the Greek god Athena, um, and uh, which stands for wisdom or knowledge. And then um, uh, uh, you'll be able to see resources of previously written dissertations. And I'm sorry for neglecting the rest of you, but this is focused on the DBA folks. And, and any other people are writing a thesis that you be able to review what your peers have written and published into this university system, uh, library system, uh, and you know take notes, compare what you want to do with what they have presented. Um, what am I leaving out? Faculty awards, student awards, travel awards. If you have a need as a graduate student, uh, and as for, it's available to undergrads also. To go to a conference, <clears throat> conference is part of your program activities. Um, reach out to us. We help administer those. We find you funding. Uh, we often have some funding ourselves. We don't have a lounge, but we have some funding. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and what else? That's pretty much it as far as I can think of. Any questions for me? Any, any thoughts? You're welcome, as always, to use the uh, uh, online context. We have a bunch of different ways to contact us 
and uh, reach out for any kind of questions you have. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. <clears throat> Have Susan from Alumni Relationships. Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today um, to actually have met some of y'all earlier in the other um, conference room we were in. But my name is Susan Lavanon, and I stand here um, today before you to introduce a powerful alley in your academic and professional pursuits, the Office of Alumni Relations. Um, as you embark on this journey with us, whether you're a new undergraduate or a seasoned graduate student, we want you to know that we're here for you. To our re returning cardinals who are already familiar with the UIW seeking an, a second or even perhaps a third degree, we extend a heartfelt welcome back. Your dedication to learning and growth is truly commendable and we're excited to continue supporting you in this new chapter. For those just returning um, or starting your UIW adventure, we're thrilled to have you join our community. Our mission is clear, to provide you with a bridge that connects your academic and endeavors um, to a thriving network of accomplished alumni. In a world fueled by digital connections, our online platform serves as a virtual gateway to a wealth of resources. Stay informed about UIW developments, connect fellow students and alumni, and access tools that can bolster your professional journey. As you embark in this transformative experience, remember that you are part of a dynamic legacy that um, spans generations. The Office of Alumni Relations is committed to ensuring that your UIW experience extends far beyond graduation. Once again, thank you so much for choosing UIW School of Professional Studies. We are located in the library um, right across from SEC in um, the ground level. Um, the, here's some of our contact information, our phone number, our email. If you all ever have any questions, feel free to stop by our office or shoot us an email or give us a call, whichever is more convenient for you all. Um, I'll be right across the hallway. If anyone has any further questions, I'm happy to further discuss those with you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a large population of our students that finish a degree and then come back for another degree. Uh, so like, let's say from associates to bachelors to masters to even DBA. So uh, this is why we feel very strongly in having our alumni relations department involved at the student level. Uh, so that you're you're aware of, of what we're doing uh, as a university um, for those local, but also uh, attending uh, virtually. Um, so we're on social media. These are our social media accounts and our handles. So please follow us. Like uh, Jonathan was saying for the Military Veterans Affairs, they post a lot of their events that are happening. So do we on our social media. So uh, these are active QR codes so you can utilize them. And then we're going to close with Sister Martha uh, saying a prayer. A closing prayer. Um, but I wanted to thank you all for being here, those who, who showed uh, up in person, but also those who showed up virtually as well. Uh, what are the three takeaways? We have a lot of lounges. <laughs> we have a lot of apps, but we're here to support you. So and we're so glad that you know, you're here and you joined us. Come on, sister. Oh, and then we'll have the, the tabling session. We'll conclude when we're done. Everybody's invited to stand up. Let's breathe deeply and look back over your brave choice to better your life through more education. Look back over things you've been hearing all morning. Let's realize that we have the ability 
to pause, to breathe, to go to a deep, calm place in ourselves, to be renewed, to be refreshed, to go to the deep underground stream of water, renewing us, helping us to go forward. In gratitude, we pray, amen. Thank you so much for coming. Good. And uh, people that signed the page will be getting an email from me. Uh, thanks a lot. We'll have to we still have options over there if you have any questions. We also will have uh, myself and the other advisors that are here. If you want to meet with any of us, talk to us. Then if you still need to get registered, we have laptops over there and can help you out with that. And we're happy to answer any questions that you might be walking away with. Okay. So I don't really get